Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Sneha and today we are going to discuss the unique aspects of gingival and periodontal fibers. So let's start off by discussing what exactly is a fiber. So fibers are substances which can either be natural, so it can be obtained from cotton or jute or it can be synthetic in nature which are manufactured. But essentially the fiber is a substance which is significantly longer than it is wider. So if we see the diameter of the fiber it will be small but the length of the fiber will be long. So now in case of the gingival and the periodontal tissues, the fibers are but obvious, natural in origin and are mainly made up of the collagen fibers. So we have the type 1 and the type uh, 3 collagen which are mostly uh, found in case of these tissues. Apart from that, the other collagens like type 4, type 7 and type 12 are found in case of uh, minor amounts and they usually form the meshwork. So in the previous broadcast where we discussed about the development of the periodontal ligament, we spoke in great detail about uh, the dental follicle and how it gives rise to the mesenchymal cells of dental follicle proper and how in turn these cells give rise to the collagen fibers. So let's now discuss in detail what exactly happens within these cells. So essentially collagen fibers are made up of uh, proteins and as with all the proteins the building blocks of proteins are the amino acids so in case of collagen the most common amino acids which are found are the glycine and the proline which along with other amino acids form the amino acid chain now this amino acid chain further undergo the process of hydroxylation in presence of vitamin C to form a single unit alpha chains which are otherwise called as the pre-pro collagen. Now at the level of pre-pro collagen it further undergoes twisting. So the single unit chains undergoes twisting uh, with the help of the hydrogen disulfide bonds and it forms a triple helix molecule. Now the process of this uh, is termed as the process of glycosylation. Now this triple helix is otherwise also called as the pro-collagen. Now at the level of pro-collagen, this uh, change then leaves the cell or undergoes exocytosis uh, and along with that there is proteolytic cleavage that happens. Now proteolytic cleavage means that the terminal end gets cut off and it forms a tropocollagen. Procollagen is soluble in nature and it is present within the cell whereas the tropocollagen becomes insoluble in nature and is present in the extracellular space. Now this uh, tropocollagen undergoes covalent bondings to form the collagen fibrils which further then bundle up to ultimately form the collagen fibers. So this is the whole process of collagen formation. So the first few steps happen inside the cell whereas the uh, last few steps happen in the extracellular space. So for our better understanding, let's classify these fibers. So these can be classified into two groups. The fibers which are present in the gingival tissue are called as gingival fibers and the fibers which are present in the periodontal ligament space are called as the periodontal fibers. Now gingival fibers is further classified into two groups. We have the secondary fibers which are minor in nature and we have the principal fibers which are major in nature. Now secondary fibers further is classified into set of six gingival fibers and the principal fibers is classified into a set of five gingival fibers. Coming on to the periodontal ligament fibers, it is uh, of three types. So we have again the principal group the elastic group and the sharpie group. Now, principal fibers of the periodontal group are a set of five periodontal fibers. The elastic fibers are further classified into elastin, oxytelin and inulin and the sharpie fibers itself. So, let's discuss each of these aspects in detail. So, gingival fibers are the fibers which help brace the marginal gingiva against the tooth structure. So if this right here is the marginal gingiva, it helps in the attachment of the marginal gingiva to the alveolar bone as well as to the root cementum.
So let's discuss first about the major group which is the principal group and it is a set of five principal fibers and the mnemonic which we can use to remember these fibers that called TOM. So the first group that we'll be talking about is the dentogingival fibers. So this dentogingival group uh, arises from the cementum and it fans out in all the directions. So it gets attached to the crest of the alveolar bone as well as to the marginal gingiva. And it basically helps to uh, uh, provide support to the uh, tooth. So next we'll talk about is the alveolar gingival. So remember uh, alveolar means alveolar bone and gingiva. So it arises from the alveolar crest and it uh, then extends coronally and gets attached to the marginal gingiva. So it helps in the attachment of the gingiva to the alveolar bone. The next subgroup that we we'll talk about is the dentoperiosteal fiber. So DAD is DAD. So dentoperiosteal fiber group arise from the cementum near the CEJ. So if this is the CEJ, it arises near the CEJ and gets inserted into the periosteum of the alveolar bone. They are somewhat present in this direction. The next group that we'll talk about are the circular group. So these circular fibers will surround the teeth in a ring or cuff like fashion. And these fibers, the circular group, uh, basically course through the marginal gingiva and through the attached gingiva. So the next fiber that we'll talk about is the transeptal fibers. So these fibers are fibers which are present in the interdental group. And this is one bundle, which uh, bundle of fibers, which is shared with both gingival fibers as well as the periodontal ligament fibers. So these transeptal group are the fibers which are present in the interproximal area connecting cementum of one teeth to the cementum of the neighboring teeth. So the mnemonic DAD called TOM, so uh, this is what uh, it will stand for DAD uh, and called is circular and ultimately TOM is transeptal fibers. Then we come to our secondary group uh, which is this uh, minor group of fibers and the mnemonic for this is PITS. So let's quickly see these fiber bundles. So the first group that we'll talk about over here is the periosteogingival fiber group. So the periosteogingival group uh, arises from the periosteum to the of the alveolar bone and gets attached or inserted into the attached gingiva. So if we remember the earlier uh, principal fiber where we spoke about the alveolo-gingival fibers, it was arising from the crest of the alveolar bone but the periosteogingival arises from the periosteum of the alveolar bone itself. So the next group that we'll talk about is the interpapillary. So as the term suggests, it's present between the interpapillary region. So if we see, uh, see this occlusal view, then this is the facial aspect, this is the lingual and this would be our mesial and this would be our distal aspect right here. So the interpapillary group extends in a facio-lingual direction and it helps to support the uh, uh, papilla itself. So it is present in the interproximal region between the two teeth. The next group that we'll talk about is the intergingival group. Now the intergingival group is seen in the attached gingiva. So right here just adjacent to the tooth we have the marginal gingiva and deeper down we have the attached gingiva. So it is seen in the attached gingiva and extends in a mesiodistal fashion. So somewhere right here we'll have these fibers extending in a mesiodistal direction. Then we have the fourth group of intercircular group. So these fibers arise from the cementum on the distal aspect of the tooth and then it will splay or it will uh, proceed in a bucolingual direction around the next teeth and gets inserted into the mesial aspect. So the next uh, set of fibers that we'll talk about is the transgingival fibers. So transgingival fibers are seen in and around the teeth and are present in the attached gingiva. So they are present towards the attached gingiva and they basically surround the teeth. So they are present in as well as around the teeth but it's more so restricted towards the attached gingiva. So the last subgroup in case of the minor uh, fiber group is the semicircular fiber and as the name suggests it 
it is semicircle that means half circle so it arises from the mesial aspect and then uh, it it goes towards the distal aspect and gets inserted into the cementum on the distal aspect but of the same teeth and as the mnemonic suggest p i but i comes three times t s pits so periosteo gingival interpapillary intergingival intercircular transgingival and the semicircular group so now let's discuss about the periodontal fibers now periodontal fibers are the fibers which are more or less wavy in nature and they are present in the periodontal ligament space so the major uh, function of this periodontal ligament fiber is that it enroots the root cementum to the alveolar bone so it helps in the attachment of the tooth to the alveolar bone and it plays a very important role to permit the movement of the tooth within the socket so periodontal ligament fibers as described before are classified into the principal group the elastic group and the sharpy fibers so the principal group is a set of 5 periodontal fibers the elastic group has a, a set of 3 that is elastin oxytelin and inulin now out of these 3 oxytelin is majorly present in the pdl and uh, it was first described by fulmer whereas inulin on the other hand is more or less present in the gingival fiber group coming on to the location of these elastic fibers these are more or less present in a vertical direction in the periodontal ligament space and they do not have any specific function but they uh, help in facilitating the blood flow so now let's discuss the principal fiber group which is the major component or fiber group in the pdl ligament space so in this first we have a subgroup which is termed as the alveolar crest group of fibers as the name suggests it runs in a bipedal fashion and it starts from the cementum just beneath the junctional epithelium and gets inserted into the alveolar crest and that is the reason it's called as the alveolar crest group so they basically facilitate uh, or permit the extrusive movement or the lateral movement of the teeth The second group that we'll talk about is the horizontal group of fibers which are present perpendicular to the long axis of the teeth and they're usually present in the apical two thirds of the root. The next group of fibers are the oblique fibers and these fibers are the most abundant in nature so they approximately 80% of the fiber group are the oblique fibers and as the term suggests they are present in a oblique fashion so they are present in a coronal direction and extends from the root root cementum towards the alveolar bone the next set of fibers are the apical group so these fibers are present in the apical area and they are only formed after the teeth completely erupts into occlusion the last group of fibers here are the interradicular group so these are only present in case of multi rooted teeth as it is present in the furcation area these fibers would fan out and help in the attachment of the root cementum in the furcation area to the alveolar bone So the third group of fibers that we have to see right now are the sharpy group. Now sharpy fibers are nothing but a component of the principal fibers which extend into the root cementum or into the alveolar bone. So the principal fibers which go and get inserted into the root cementum or alveolar bone then get calcified and start getting associated with certain proteins like the bone siloprotein or osteopointin. and they basically form the sharpy fibers which is a very minor component of the periodontal ligament fiber group so to quickly summarize what we saw in this video we spoke about the gingival and the periodontal fibers and uh, in case of gingival fibers we spoke about the secondary minor group and the principal or the major group so the so the principal group of fibers are set of five fibers and we gave a mnemonic dad called tom whereas the secondary minor group are a set of six fibers and we gave a mnemonic of pits coming on to the periodontal fibers so these fibers uh, are present in the periodontal ligament space and further classified into principal group the elastic group and the sharpy group so again principal group set of five fibers elastic group has elastin oxytelin and inulin and the sharpy group are fibers which get inserted into the cementum or into the alveolar bone and undergo calcification 
So with this, I conclude this video on the gingival and periodontal ligament fiber and I hope it was helpful and useful. And if it was, please do subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. I'll be uh, back soon with the next video where we'll be discussing about the functions of the periodontal ligament. And until we meet next, take good care of yourself. This is Periohub signing off.